River State or Progressive Congress APC 2023 governorship candidate Tony Cole has assured supporters that he will pursue his petition challenging the outcome of March 18's election to a logical conclusion. Cole on his social media handles gave the assurance on Monday night following the withdrawal of the APC from the petition challenging the victory of the People's Democratic Party Similai Fubara as Rivers governor-elect at the tribunal hearing petition in Abuja. Also, the chieftain of the Rivers APC, Joe Kokawada, has accused the Rivers PDP of including or inducing the reported withdrawal of the APC from the petition challenging for Barra's victory. Joining us this evening once again to discuss uh, is Sobey Eli, spokesperson, Rivers APC campaign council. Thank you so much, Sobey, for joining us. Good evening. Good evening, dear. Nigeria. Thanks for having me. Yes, here we are again talking about um, what happened in River State. Of course, tribunals are holding and hearing um, all of the petitions. Um, thank goodness um, all of them have been moved to Abuja. So, um, but unfortunately, we might not all be seeing um, this um, <laughs> petition, um, um, watching it live on television. But most importantly, um, one would wonder why the APC withdrew from a suit that was um, that is mostly about their candidate, um, because of course the APC had from the election day um, continuously screamed at the top of their voices that the elections were purely rigged um, by the sitting government, which is the People's Democratic Party. What do you think could have been responsible for the pullouts of some of your members? Well, um, when you say pullout of some of our members. Um what will be telling the thing that uh, our candidates who have um, the constitutional rights and qualification to apply for election and then challenge the outcome of elections as provided for at section 133 of the Electoral Act 2022 pulled out. No, they didn't pull out. Uh, in that section of the law, section 133 of the Electoral Act, uh, two persons are or two categories of persons are identified as persons that present election petitions. One is the candidate who participated in the election, and then, of course, the number two is the political party. Now, nowhere in that law is it said that at all material times, a petition is only valid insofar as the candidate and the party go together. Uh, what has happened here uh, to all of us is, is not surprising. The previous APC from inception has always been the sacrificial lamb of the APC in Nigeria. And I say this with the broken hearts. People sabotage APC universities for whatever reasons, for fleeting political pleasure. But it is what it is. In 2015, no state chapter in all of the 35 other states, lost human beings to political British as river states. Very, very important of them, you know, you know this. We we'll, we'll call out names of persons who died. They are not found for people that people were seen. Up until 2019 and now 2023, we also very Chase of Leonard, who was a campaign coordinator for Tony Cole in the West. I was killed on April 18. People behind a child of less than two weeks old. It was fed by Bullard of a good law. That's a PhD student. And this is a very value for that matter. But in all of these, people are playing politics in Abuja. I think they can go to the tribunal and withdraw petitions. And, uh, how, how was it done? You know, Harry A. Bello, Esquire of Cancer. Uh, and the role they played in uh, the case of Ibrahim Omar and others against APC in 2018, which case led to the APC being answered to the ballot in the University of 2019. That was a man that somebody briefed in Abuja to go and sign in for APC as cancer. Whereas Jibril Okutek by SN was already leading the party. Hmm. Eminent lawyers like Tudor Desen were in the, in the same mix. Of course, Tony Kola's old lawyers from Abuja and uh, Cross Federation also leading him. But when they brought to build, uh, this guy, um, Henry Bello, naturally we kicked. So, what the party thought they could do in the circumstance 
the cause of keeping things very bellum, friend of the party, was to come back and announce it that you join through a certain Solomon no more. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's quite shocking, but we'll thank God for the wisdom of the famous new electoral acts. That's section 133 that defines who uh, present petitions to tribunals and giving the party less powers to override the interests of the candidates. Okay. Of course, we go back to section 9 of the same electoral acts. Once the party has submitted the name of the candidates to INEC, the party cannot, on its own, so move to withdraw the candidates. Okay. The only grounds for the candidate to withdraw under section of the law is that the candidate themselves are writing. Submitted to the party, which will now in turn submit to INEC, that is withdrawn from the race, and then the party, INEC now has 14 days because of that primary to replace that candidate, or the candidate dies. Okay. So, where death and voluntary resignation on the ticket are not the issue, the party cannot run its own. This has nothing to do with party space. You can't betray a candidate. Let, 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 let's, 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 let's do some housekeeping. Let's, 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 let's shed some light on the APC in River State because you said that the APC in River State has continuously been a sacrificial lamb uh, yes. for elections and politicians in Nigeria. I'd like to, uh, I mean, it seems to me, because I have lived and worked in River State and I've seen the politics play out, uh, it seems like the APC in Riverside had lost its winning streak right after um, the minister, former minister for transportation stepped down as governor. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because we've seen this play out so many times, and the APC is yet to win um, that seat, that very coveted seat. Again, how true is it that your national leader, the minister himself, uh, had abandoned the party, even the candidate, and was missing in action in the midst of all of the campaigning and the elections in itself. He only showed up on election day. Um, what exactly is going on? Let me correct. Let me take it from the first. Number one, we don't lose elections here. At Tango, he said, you have worked here, so you need to beat the reverse politics. Let me ask any party chapter in, in Nigeria, if you lost numbers, of members that we lost in River States in 2015. How many of them have the courage to come out to say they want to run elections in their states? Where nothing has happened to the killers. No one has been brought to justice. Not one. How many of them in other state chapters can step forward to challenge a system where life and death is involved? So let's let's deal with the issues. When we play politics about winning, how come election to many river states is, is, is often about guns? How come a man like Trenko, for instance, will conduct elections and good clubs, he will go to an office to collect the CTC of results as allowed by law and were attacked of the vice and actually now nobody has the world. Nobody has been arrested. Democracy in itself is about freedom of choice. So if it's about the right to choose leaders, the leaders of the APC, University particularly Dr. Mamichi, has credible results on the streets across the 23 entities of River State. Across 391 river states, for which reason the APC must be supported. So, why the question to ask is why are opponents of the APC always afraid of allowing the party contest in free and fair elections? Why militarize elections? And then at the other time, the APC has an opportunity to run the proper elections when there are military men on ground to checkmate those who clubs, those militants that the PDP uses to terrorize the people to win elections, win quote unquote. By violence. Once the military is injected into the system, why come the PDP is what that complains? But this is not the first time the military has been injected in elections. Like I said, we know how this thing plays out. But again, I'll go back to my Amechi question. Um, previously, yes. I made, the, the minister had been seen at campaigns pushing very much for a Tony yes. Cole governorship. But this yes. time, he was nowhere to be found. I remember the last time you were here and I asked you, where is the minister? You said he was in school. It's in school, yes, of course. It's interesting for a man whose party has experienced that type of breakdown, especially so, a mass, massive move to the opposition. And yet you have a candidate that needs you, but he was nowhere to be found. He appeared on election day, and you're telling me that he was busy, and we should all take that well, sitting well, down. Miriam, should he not be Miriam, fighting me... to make sure that people accept his candidate as opposed to being missing in action? And you're the leader of that party in the state. 
There, there is nowhere in law or in the Constitution where what they're saying is tenable. The man has a right to do what he wants to do. He's not a candidate. Let's not mix issues. He's not running an election. At that time, when he was not running an election, he was director general of the campaign to Buari. For 2015 and 2019, he was everywhere in the Federation. Everybody saw him. You know him. If he's doing a thing, he comes out to do it. So why didn't he come out for Tony Cole? He was he not in support of, of his me. governorship candidacy? No, no you don't. It, it didn't abandon Tony Cole. I, I was the campaign spokesman. I'm still. I'm still campaign council dissolved. There was no time of how that he said I'm not interested. There was no time. At the grand finale, he was not Bonima. Unfortunately, in arriving at Bonima, we went around other words that are in the Deltaic area. We went to Nama, we went to go to Abisa, and of course, the other areas, Paul came out of Bonima. He could deal with the left, right? But he was not going to everybody to him. And with, even without him, it can be held. So the issue about it has to be a Michi is, is, I understand the sentiments, yes. But there's nothing to show here that he abandoned the party if he wants, or he abandoned the candidate if he wants. You yeah. may want to ask, okay, how does the party fund this on elections? Does anybody have any evidence that they played the role? I like to be corrected. But you know, let's not major on the minor. The impression people create as though, it would be one situation where he would subsume the candidate of, uh, candidate of Tony Cole, like, we can subsume that of Sim Fukra. As to speak here, there are a lot of people in the university who do not think that Sim spoke to them about elections. All right? Yes, he was a glad winner. He didn't attend any of those uh, TV televised debates. Conducted by interest groups, even the media, he didn't attend one. Is that what the bill of democracy, where the candidate who set up an election is subsumed under the large image of his leader, who is not on the ballot? Is that what they're encouraging? I said that's what I'm saying should be the norm now. Otherwise, Tony Cole himself is well and able to represent himself. And I don't matter all times, he has done so. Okay. It's a delight to hear on the issues. Okay. So why would anybody think that a mission should be looming large across his head to speak at okay. campaigns before his hands? Be or that if a mission does not come, then something has gone wrong. The man is in law school. Okay. All right? All right. Everybody knows. He's not, he can verify it. not verify. It's in okay. law school. Because, well, because of time, let me ask you finally, what is the future of the APC in River State? Because again, like we, you said, even you said it, a mass movement has happened. Um, how soon can the APC build back up to become a viable opposition the, for the PDP the APC, in the state? The APC, the APC University is always the party to beat. Those who call us cancer are struggling to come to join us. Are you not aware? Those who tell Apabio that they are inviting people to join cancer stage four, yes, okay, I said so. Are you not aware that he's struggling to join the APC by all means? Are you not aware that he's backing Apabio for the president by all means? So the APC University, the party to beat, the party to beat, party to beat. leave the noise, leave the shenanigans. We are here, they beat us, and they join us, and work here. Okay. And the only thing that will change is that when the character of the politicians have changed, the kind of violence you see that have been uh, 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 the APC probably moves again. Because we don't believe in applying violence to okay. win the hearts of minds of people. Okay. We believe in articulating issues, formulating policies, present our, our manifestos, our candidates. Check us out. Apart from Tony Cole and Innocent Parigo is deputy. Look at the other candidates who parade them. I sent a hundred book for Senate. Uh, for Rivers West, for River City, it was it was it was it was um, the Dr. Uh, um Wako. And for Rivers South East, it was the Excellency Ojin Gopher for Senate. All right. Look at those particular candidates. I'm not the PDP can beat them on one. Okay. Go to the House of Representatives. All the 13 parties were, were first class. Okay. Go to the House of the other two. So how come members who cannot connect our people? So the only way they can win us is to use violence and big advantage and you say we cannot win. Well, they're coming to join us. They're coming to join us and they see this is refined, clean politics. Okay. Politics of issues, politics of ideology, politics of direction and development, not okay. big advantage. All right. Well, I want to say thank you. Always a pleasure. Shagbeye Eli is a member of the um, APC in River State. Thank you so much for speaking with us, sir. We appreciate it.
Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you. Well, that's it on the show tonight. But before we leave, you would like to let you into the highlights of today's, uh, this week's conversation from Monday up until today. But don't forget, you can also on Plus Politics. Go to Plus TV Africa on our YouTube. Like, subscribe and follow us. I am Mary Anna Cohn. Do have a pleasant evening and have a good weekend. Bye bye. relevant will Wike be in the next two years running to the beginning of processes of second term? If Ashiwaju thinks that this man is not going to be useful to him, trust me, he's not going to have any important relationship with Mr. Tinubu, uh, sorry, Mr. Wike. So that is to say the politician, if he's the one that comes to party, He's going to be thinking of his next election. So he's going to think in terms of how he can extend his tentacles. He's going to enlarge the position of Mr. Akpavio to have a large hold on the South-South. Okay? He's going to keep playing the game with Mr. Wike to ensure, while watching, to ensure that he actually gets reversed, wrapped up. By the time he gets reversed, wrapped up, and he gets Kano State wrapped up, he can relax and know that second term, he can play. And I think it's a slap on the face of the government of Nigeria that they could not fix our refineries in eight years of at least the President Muhammad Buhari administration. And they could not also build new refineries. Now, the refineries we have are old and obsolete. These are refineries that were built in the 70s and in the 80s. The technology has gone obsolete and they are supposed to set up brand new uh, 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 refineries for the country. Look at what Dangote said, that the refinery that is built has capacity to refine the Nigerian crude and crude oil from other parts of the world. That is to say, it is so modernized that any crude oil you put in, it will be able to adjust itself to producing that product and being able to give you what you want. This is what we mean. This is state-of-the-art facility that the government of Nigeria was supposed to put in place. And do not be surprised that the reason why the government of Nigeria and the people within the system have failed to fix our refineries and to build new refineries is because of the so much money they make from the inflated fuel subsidy that they continue to pay in trillions of naira. Because a lot of people within the system are allegedly using that particular you know, subsidy regime to enrich themselves. So I think they need to you know, remove this from their face. And I'm talking to and letting the president, uh, you know, elect who is taking over on May 5th now, which is, of course, my birthday, to remember that he is coming to inherit a system that has already failed. He's coming to, uh, 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 I mean, uh, coming to take over a system that people need him to hit the ground running almost immediately. First of all, let me say that uh, the president meant well by that uh, policy. You know, and this mantra of uh, knowing what we eat and eat what we grow. I mean, it's it's a, it's a very good nationalistic uh, pronouncement and commitment. But when it comes to economic policies, I think there should be more rigor in the policy process. It is not enough to feel patriotically in quotes that we need to produce more rice. We cannot, because of rice, you know, close a border. Yes, those people that were uh, engaging in those hate species are members, maybe of my own party, but they were not speaking for my party based on the issues they talk about. They were speaking for their ethnic concerns. For instance, People come up in a town and say, look, this town we have lived here more than 50 years. And because the town is more cosmopolitan uh, city, nobody owns the place. And then because these people are from this ethnic group, they now come out and say, look, this is our town. That doesn't mean they are speaking for the APC. That does not mean they are speaking for the president alleged no uh, before the marching order given by president Buhari
in uh, about October last year, what we what we used to experience on a daily basis was bombings, killings of whether security agents or the military or even the civilians who are not even armed. Mm -hmm. But again, going by the by the UN resolution, Nigeria is under policed. Nigeria, the military, of course, has a primary responsibility to defend the, ter the territorial integrity of Nigeria. Theirs are not civil cases. So those they are combating today are terrorists in whatever guise, in whatever phase. You have them drafted to the northeast, you have them drafted to the northwest, you have them drafted to the north central, you have them drafted to the southeast, you have them drafted to the south south, you have them drafted to the southwest. Election matters, you bring in the military. Intracommunal issues, you bring in the military. Intercommunal issues, you bring in the military. Tribal conflicts, you bring in the military. Religious conflicts, you bring in the military. Right.